What is up, YouTube? What is up, family? We got some more Tim Minchin. This is quite an interesting fella. That's all I gotta say. I've heard him once, just once. Lullaby. Very interesting fella. Anyway, you guys said I need to see Thank You, God. So let's go. Let's check it out. You know, I listen. I listen. I pay attention. So, uh, <laughs> with pleasure. Uh, man, I don't know what we're gonna... Let's just see, because some of you said... He can go on that same path as Lullaby, and his newer stuff is like serious but beautiful music. So, we'll we'll see which one this is. I have a feeling it's going to be uh, the first one. Sorry, I'm procrastinating. Look, uh, there's just something I, I kind of need to address, and I should do it. I know I should do it now. Um, that I, 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 over the years, I've realized that um, so a, lo a lot of my audience has come to my shows uh, particularly because of a, uh, um, uh, sometimes because I quite often sing about beliefs. Um, specifically, in the past, I've sung a lot about uh, faith and religion. And uh, if I'm completely honest with you, I've um, tended to mock, mock uh, some of the not in general, but some of the more the my perceived hypocrisies. Uh, but I just don't want anyone to be waiting for that because I'm not doing it anymore. Um, what? Well, <laughs> I, know, I know it's... Look, I, I should... I, you just, you, you've earned an explanation, you're right. Um, it, something, something happened to me, you see, uh, when I was touring my last show in Australia. It was the, begin, the beginning of last year. And um, I was doing a gig, not, not one of my gigs, it was a, a sort of... It was actually a new material night uh, hosted by the... Uh, Ross Noble, you know, the, the long-haired, mentally ill northerner. And, um, <laughs> mentally ill northerner. <laughs> northerner. <laughs> He's a genius, um, which is a mentally ill person with an audience. Um, <laughs> he's <laughs> beautiful. He's the, the, you know, I love this guy. Best. And, and he, he does this amazing gig. And we were having a drink afterwards, and it was a really nice vibe in the bar. But I noticed this dude who slightly uncomfortably was hovering sort of uh, on the periphery of our group. And I noticed in particular this tall, really handsome guy had those nice dreadlocks that you can get for about 600 quid at the hairdresser. And he had a shirt open to about here and it's very tanned. But I noticed him particularly because he had a, 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 a long silver chain the hanging cross. on the end of the chain. A quite prominent silver cross. You know, the sort of cross you might wear if you're a fan of intersections. <laughs> I love this guy. I love this guy. Oh, I'm really getting to see his personality in this one. This is... Somebody said, Lullaby shouldn't have been the first time I've seen him. You're right. This is what I should have seen as a first-time reaction. Oh, this is brilliant so far. Or, or, or the lowercase letter T. <laughs> or, or probably most commonly if you're a fan of the apparatus by which first century Romans put to death and tortured Jewish insurgents. And uh, anyway, he's sort of standing there. And um, eventually he, he, made, he, he made the move and he came over and it's lovely, polite. I said, hi, g'day, I'm Sam. Uh, his name was Sam. He said, I'm from Dandenong. He was from uh, Dandenong, which is the suburb of Dandenong set in the Dandenong Ranges, just, just to the southeast of Melbourne. And... Uh, What? Don't come down here. The suburb of Dandenong set in the Dandenong Ranges, just, just to the southeast of Melbourne. And uh, we got talking, but I could tell he wanted to talk to me, and eventually he managed to kind of, you know, isolate me from the pack. And he said, Tim, I've always wanted to talk to you because I'm, I'm a fan of your work, and I don't want you to think I'm offended or anything, but uh, as you might have noticed, I'm a Christian. <laughs> Christian. Uh, and he said, I've just, I've always wanted to ask you why, why you don't believe in God. And I said, well, Sam, I don't believe in God for the same reason that anyone that doesn't believe in a thing doesn't believe in it because I haven't yet been offered enough evidence to allay my doubts. And he said, but you don't just go through your whole life only believing things for which you have evidence. <laughs> and I said... Um, yes, I do, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty much how I... 
stutter my way through my turgid existence. <laughs> and he said, what about love? And I said, well, what about love, Sam? And he said, do you believe in love? And I said, yeah, I, I, I believe in love, I think. I am, Can you see I love, he's going to say. I am loved, sure. And he said, aha, <laughs> you don't have any evidence for love. <laughs> and I said, I mean, I think, yeah, I've got evidence. Sure, I mean, love without evidence is stalking. <laughs> oh my god this guy's good this guy's good very smart and he said well tim if it's evidence you want how about this and he told me this story this incredible story about his mum you see sam and his mother were members of a big evangelical church congregation in the dandenongs you know one of those new glassy type ones and um in in her early 60s sam's mum had um gone to the doctor with a problem with her eye and she had diagnosed an irreversible um, degenerative eye disorder and he told her that if she didn't get surgery very quickly that she would lose her eyesight and Sam's mum was afraid because she didn't believe in modern medicine she didn't trust doctors she, she was she was afraid of hospitals and the idea of surgery but Sam and his mum went to this this church this incredible church and that Sunday the entire congregation of their church some 1700 people prayed the same time as Sam's mum and the following Tuesday they went back to the doctor and there was no sign that there'd ever been anything wrong with her eyes she was healed she was cured and the reason this story had an impact on me is because I try I try to be intellectually honest with others and with myself and all I've ever asked for is evidence and here I was witnessing a first-person account of what can only be described as a miracle so I went home and I wrote this song. <laughs> I can only imagine. My God. <laughs> I have an apology to make. I'm afraid I've made a big mistake. I turned my face away from you, Lord. I was too blind to see the light. I was too meek to feel your mind. I closed my eyes, I couldn't see the truth, Lord. But then like Saul on the Damascus road, you sent a messenger to me, and so, now I've had the truth revealed to me. Please forgive me all those things I said. I'll no longer betray you, Lord. I will pray to you instead. And I will say thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for fixing the cataracts of Sam's mom. I had no idea, but it's suddenly so clear. Now I feel such a cynic. How could I have been so dumb? Thank you for displaying how praying works A particular prayer in a particular church Thank you, Sam, for the chance to acknowledge this Omnipotent ophthalmologist <laughs> Thank you, God, for fixing the cataracts of Sam's mom I didn't realize that it was so simple But you've shown a great example of just how it can be done You only need to pray in a particular spot To a particular version of a particular God And if you pull that off Without a hitch, he will fix one eye of one middle-class white bitch. <laughs> I know in the past, my outlook has been limited. I couldn't see examples of where life had been definitive. But I can admit it when the evidence is clear. As clear as Sam's mom's new cornea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, God, for fixing the cataracts of Sam's mom. To admit that in the past I have been skeptical But Sam described this miracle and I am ever calm How fitting that the sighting of a sight-based intervention Should open my eyes to this exciting new dimension It's like someone put an eye chart up in front of me And the top five letters say I-C-G-O-D <laughs> Thank you Sam for showing how my point of view has been so flawed I assume there was no God at all But now I see that cynical It's simply that his interests aren't particularly broad He's largely undiverted by the starving masses For the inequality between the various classes He gives out strictly limited passes Redeemable for 
for surgery or two for one glasses. <laughs> I feel so shocking for historically mocking you. Your interests are... In other words... <laughs> in other words, yeah, you know... <laughs> Okay, I'll answer that prayer. Uh, but the entire other world, you know, the whole world going to shit, basically. That's not my problem. <laughs> you you humans figure that out on your own. But okay, yeah, you know, you got a bad eye? I'll hook you up with it. Just pray a little. I got you. I, I'll fix your eye. But forget all the other issues. I, I'm, I don't care about that. That's basically what he just said. <laughs> this, guy, this guy is so good. <laughs> So shocking for historically mocking you. Your interests are clearly confined to the ocular. I bet given the chance, you just chew the divine and start a little business selling contacts online. <laughs> Fuck me, Sam. What are the odds that of history's endless parade of gods that the god who just happened to be taught to believe in is the actual god and he digs on healing, but not the AIDS ridden African nations, nor the victims of the plague, nor the flat out but healthy, privately insured Australians with common and curable lens degeneration. <laughs> the story of Sam's is about a single explanation. A surgical god who digs on magic operations. No, it couldn't be mistaken. Attribution of causation. Born of a coincidental temporal correlation. Exacerbated by a general lack of education. Vis a vis physics in Sam's pious congregation. It couldn't be that all these pious people are liars. It couldn't be an artifact of confirmation bias. A product of groupthink. A mass delusion, an emperor's new clothes style, fear of exclusion. No, it's more likely to be an all powerful magician than the misdiagnosis of the initial condition. Or one of many cases of spontaneous remission. Or a record keeping glitch by the local physician. No, the only explanation for Sam's mom wow. scene. They pray to an all knowing super being, to the omnipresent master of the universe. And he liked the sound of their muttered verse. So for a bit of a change from his usual stunt of being a sexist, racist, murderer. Cunt. He popped down to Dan and Owen just like that. Wow. He used his powers to heal the cataracts. Ah, Sam's mom. Ah, Sam's mom. Oh, thank you, God, for fixing the cataracts of Sam's mom. I didn't mean Holy crap, I didn't realize that many people are watching him. Wow. Okay, yeah. I, I Listen, by... He should absolutely be this popular. This popular. He should be. This guy is. This is this is a work of art right here that we're watching. This is good stuff. Realized that it was such a simple thing. I feel such a female in what ignorant scum. Now I understand a prayer can work. A particular prayer in a particular church in a particular style with a particular stuff and for particular problems that I'm particularly tough and for particular people. Preferably white for particular senses. Preferably sight a particular prayer in a particular spot to a particular version of a particular God. And if you get that right, he just mine. Take a break from giving babies malaria and pop down to your local area to fix the cataracts of your own. Brilliant. Brilliant. And so true. <laughs> not one thing, not one thing was false. Not one. Not one. <laughs> not one. You know, she might have just got lucky. You know, the body might have just healed itself. It, it does that once in a while. It does that once in a while. <laughs> the body is a very sophisticated thing, you know. Uh, yeah, meanwhile, you know, how many prayers have gone, uh, you know, have gone a... Uh, uh, just kind of just went lost in the dark, you know, with, you know, I have cancer. Please, God, help me, help me with my cancer. I, I need this cancer uh, cured, you know. I'm dying here. Uh, help me out here, please. How many of them still die? And how many live? And go, holy crap, I'm cured. <laughs> the doctors did all the work in the hospital and the medicine and the chemo and all. But no, it's God who gets all the credit, you know. So I can see how it goes back and forth. I really can but here it is, people. I have one thing to say. One important thing. Happened a long, long time ago. My daughter was about two years old. I was in the backyard. I was doing some work in the kitchen. We had a gated, we had a fenced-in backyard. 
And my daughter, who was about two and a half, was just just playing, just just playing on the gym set. You know, not in the. She wasn't old enough to like swing and do all that by herself yet. Well, maybe she was. You know, honestly, I don't remember. But she could walk. I'll tell you that much. She was walking all over the place, and she was playing with her, whatever her doll in the backyard, whatever. I went inside. I went inside. I swear to you, I went inside for forty-five seconds. It was not even a minute. Not even a minute. <clears throat> did whatever I did. I think I was fixing cabinets. I was fixing a one cabinet that wouldn't open right, so I was fixing the hinges. Unscrewed it. Took the hinge out. Really, that's it. Went outside, my daughter was gone. Gone. And all I can tell you is after like two minutes of just going nuts in the house, where the hell is she? She's not in the house. She's not outside. She's nowhere. I went in the front yard, nothing, emptiness. Very quiet neighborhood, cul-de-sac, thankfully. So not a lot of traffic, but also at the same time, not a soul that could tell me, hey, I saw your daughter. She just walked by, like nothing. Like you could hear crickets. And I swear to you, this is not a lie. Out of nowhere, an incredibly strong, extremely strong feeling overcame me and almost led me, like literally, like felt like it was grabbing me and pulling me across the street to the other side of my neighbor's house it pulled me all the way into my neighbor's backyard who had a pond who I saw found my daughter. All I saw were two little feet floating. The entire body was under the water. I pulled her out. She was purple. Gave her some CPR. Pushed on the belly. All the water came out. She started crying. Long story short, she's 19 today. All is well. Doctors said maybe another 30 seconds she would have been brain dead for life. What's that? Was that God? Was that an angel? Was that a miracle? I have no idea. I can tell you there was a strong feeling that overcame me that almost led me like, hey, dummy, your daughter's there. Come with me. I'll show you. I swear to you. So there are some weird things in life that you really can't explain. But I do find this hilarious. I really do. Because, you know, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? So much can, you know, it's just unexplainable. And, but there's also a lot that is explainable. Anyway, sorry for the long story. Just, I thought it, it matched with what we just heard. You know what I mean? I had to say it. Anyway, thank you, God. Tim mentioned this guy. I love him. He's amazing. And yes, you're right. I need to go down this rabbit hole. It's necessary. Take care. Peace out. Have a good night.